Hi, Master. Hi. I have a Loving the Silent Tears musical story. Tell me. We would like to thank Master for writing the poetry collection Silent Tears, which has inspired the composer, Al Kasha, to create the musical Loving the Silent Tears. Many of the artists and creative team members and composers shared with us how much they loved Master's poetry in Silent Tears. The stars wow. not only came from diverse cultures, but they've also had different walks of life and religious backgrounds. For example, the Korean star Brian Ju is a devout Christian and Leo Colette is Jewish. Oh. And the artists resonated with Master's poems. For example, the Korean pop star Brian Ju said, I love poems, and to be able to read and hear and to be able to perform her poems and music was phenomenal. I just feel like I can learn a lot from the poetry as well. The audience members that night were also very touched by the poems. For example, one lady who actually presents for BBC in the UK said the following. I got choked up a few times. I got a little bit, a little bit, a little bit teary. teary. Very deep, very meaningful. And, and I, think I think it's something we can all take away with us. We also work with foreign language composers to help arrange the songs written in English into 14 different languages that we represented on stage. One of the composers, Brian Hunter, was given the Irish Gaelic song to arrange between the master and I. After he arranged it into Gaelic, he sang a demo for us and was so touched that he wrote this message. This is just a beautiful song in Gaelic. If I had months, I would continue to work on my interpretation as a performer of it. It is a sweet and loving way to feel in those times when one is more aware of God's peaceful presence than others. It can also give a welcome reminder to many fast-paced lives that God is available to calm and soothe, at least while listening to this song. Wow. Master, we would like to know what inspired you to write the poetry anthology, Silent Tears. It's um, just the empathy, the human struggle to achieve the impossible. We all go through this. Saints, sinners, mortal, all alike. If you want to seek your true self, this is a struggle like that. So I feel all the humans feeling. I feel I feel empathy with them. Yeah? Yes, That's Master. why I wrote it. It comes from within. It comes from my oneness with all human struggle and pain. Even the non-practitioners, they also have moments of despair and the moment of need to turn inward, to pray to some power that they don't even know what, to pray to the God that maybe they not even believe. Always there's a struggle within the human's heart. So my poetry, The Silent Tears, it's just the reflection of that. Okay? Yes, Master. Thank you. And You're may welcome. we know when you wrote these beautiful poems, and was it India that you wrote them? No, no. In Taiwan. Uh, <laughs> it must have been like uh, 30 years in something like that. It was in the 80s. Huh? Oh. Yeah. At that time, um, I was just beginning my little mission. <laughs> Just beginning a little bit in Taiwan, and we didn't have a lot of money then. I I grow like uh, sprouts, yeah, bean bean sprouts to sell, <laughs> to have some money. And uh, the disciple at that time, there's some uh, uh, monks and nuns who just follow me like that, and we didn't have anywhere to live. And then then suddenly there is a the house for rent. We call it snake house because it's full of snake. <laughs> <laughs> Inside out. <laughs> Sometimes we sleep and wake up, oh, there's a snake next to you. Be careful, don't <laughs> roll over. <laughs> and sometimes they use the broom to remove him or her. And I told my people, please don't use the broom. You have to use some soft cloth or something because if you use the broom, you might hurt his eyes. And they think I was very merciful because they say, oh, master, people, if they don't kill the snake, it's already very merciful. What worry about the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I say, no, if, if you were the snake, you would be worried. So think yourself of the snake, so don't use a broom. Use something soft. And uh, the snakes never bit us or anything. They, they just won with the floor. 
The floor <laughs> is a black and white kind of pattern, you know? Yes, Master. Waving pattern. And the snake looks exactly just like that. So sometimes you don't even know if it's the floor pattern it is, or it is the snake. <laughs> sometimes they come and sing in song to me or saying uh, thank you and all that. The snakes, they're very cute. Very, but they could be very dangerous. I know this is a black and white snake. I've never seen it anywhere else. So the snake house is like that and we don't have much to do except Sunday uh, some disciples come uh, to group meditation and I talk a few words and and then I grow my sprouts and <laughs> doing some knitting in order to sell and uh, the monks and nuns there are growing potatoes and stuff and then we, we get by and we have a little box and we put all the money in there and whoever needs can use it but we don't need much so I'm just uh, having a little more leisure time so I tune in with all the humans and then that's how the poetry came into uh, manifestation <laughs> into the book I never thought that there would be a day when some of the greatest composers and some of the greatest artists would make them into a big world stage like America, such a, like a shrine auditorium like that. It's not in a million years <laughs> I would dream about it. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe I would have polished it more, <laughs> make it more beautiful somehow, more elegant or something. I just wrote it the way I felt. It just come out quick and then that's how it is. Sometimes I didn't write it well, so I had to throw that piece away and rewrite it, but that's all, no correction, not much. I didn't write it well because we didn't have much money, and <laughs> so I have one of the pen that the, the students, like in Vietnam, used to use. Yes, Do you know how to call it? The pen that has the pointed at the end and you have to dip it in the, in, in the ink. We use it like 50, 60 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, instead of ball pen nowadays, we use that kind of uh, pen and put it in the ink. I had just happened to have it and dip it in the ink and write it one by one and the, the pen was too new. So it's very hard. That's why you can see my writing wasn't very excellent at all not like calligraphy of any kind. I just wrote it for myself. Wrote it for myself like a diary. And then one day, you know, the people, disciples read it and then they want it and then they, they discover it and they want to print some out of it. So it was copy the way I wrote it and print it out the way I wrote it. By wow. copying, like, you know? Yes, Master. Like my writing. <laughs> so if you see the old copy, it's, uh, it, it's like a children writing. Because that kind of pen, the more you use it, the more subtle it becomes and the more you can write nicely. But the new pen is always too hard. Yes. So anyway, I, I couldn't bother because I never thought it's going to be for anybody, so I wrote it for myself. And then later they copy exactly how I wrote it, using copy style and then print it into some books and then give it to disciples and then later on, we print it into, you know, stylish printer in, in the typing, not, not in handwriting. So the old version is in the real handwriting, and the newer version is printed. That's where I wrote it and how I wrote it. Yes, Master. Happy? Yes, definitely. The poetry in that collection, every single verse is, is really beautiful, and it really strikes a chord. My God. It's, it's really deep and meaningful. Thank you, oh, Master. I'm glad because... I never thought about it that way. I never thought anybody would even like it. All of my poems that has become music and so-called famous a little bit nowadays, I never ever thought that anybody would even, I never think of even anybody would even let eye on it, you know, or even read it. Truly like that. And now, even nowadays, I'm still thinking, oh, they really put it into music. My God, you know? <laughs> yeah, and they all love it too, Master. They all love it. Yeah. The composers, the singers, the audience, everybody loves it. I, I still could hardly believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, uh, you know, like uh, surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Still am surprised. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about it. But I feel good about it, but I'm still thinking, oh, people like it, really. <laughs> <laughs> very much I still so. wonder why. Yes. 
Master, could you please explain the meaning of the verse, Loving the Silent Tears, which the creative team chose to be the title of the musical? I, uh, when I wrote it, I didn't think about it, anything. I just wrote the way I felt. You know, I just felt that way. You know, like, uh, when you're crying, you feel relieved, yeah? And crying relieves the longing emotion, the choking emotion of frustration, of not knowing God. Uh, it's so hard to find God, so hard to feel connected with God. So when you're crying, at least you feel elated, you feel unburdened, yeah? Yes, so the practitioners feel some comfort while struggling to achieve the impossible. <laughs> I mean, the almost impossible, like, like the higher level of enlightenment. That's why I say love in the silent tears. Because at that time, you were so desperate to feel connection with God, to want to see the Master inside you, want to see your real self. Even if people offered you diamonds, you would not care. You would love to just sit there and thinking of the Master inside and crying. And thinking of Master, loving the Master, missing the Master, instead of looking at these worthless stones that they call diamonds. Okay? Yes, That's what Master. it is. That's the way I felt at that time. Okay. Thank you, Master, so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. <laughs> All of your questions, so good. So, uh, so very um, uh, amusing. <laughs> Any more? Uh, yes, Master. Uh, I have another story to share. Um, so, two of the stars of Loving the Silent Tears one day got interviewed by Global Voice Radio on a radio show called On Air with Tony Sweet. Yeah. And one of the two radio hosts is actually a psychic. And oh. Yes. And in the middle of this interview, it was going well, um, the psychic radio host said something to the two cast members. He said, when you do what you're born to do, and, and you're, you're both, both doing, doing it, you will rendezvous on the earth plane with other like-minded people who had higher dreams, goals, and aspirations than everyday people dare to dream. Yeah. You will find each other on this planet, and you will find each other in a place like the City of Angels, and you will morph and transform the frequency of this earth, and you will take it beyond, beyond, beyond. And, and that's, that's what, what you, you signed, signed up, up for. for. Hmm. So that's what he said. Um, and Master, is it really true, as this radio host said, that the artists came um, for a mission to elevate the earth? Yes, but don't tell them. They don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Master. Yes. They help in their talented uh, act to transport people through emotions to a more elevated level of consciousness, you see? As some... And then some would remain there in this higher consciousness or go higher. Some would ponder at least about all meanings, real meanings in life, thus become more connected, more focused within the real love of heaven and within themselves. You see, it helps. Yes? yes. But they didn't think they'd do it to help. They just do it. It's their job. They just did it. But one day maybe heaven let them know what they have done and how they help in this grand scheme to uplift the, the world and elevate the planet. Yeah? Maybe. Maybe if they have become more pure in their heart, or more vegan, or more focused on spiritual way of life, then maybe one day they would even know it. Oh, right yes. now, maybe they wouldn't. <laughs> But nevertheless, they did it. Hmm? Yes, Master. Thank you, Master. Welcome. We were also really thrilled and touched to know that gods and goddesses, and not just angels, helped with the recent musical, Loving the Silent Tears. Um, so, Master, we were kind of curious, um, how many gods and goddesses came to help us, Master? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> wow. A lot. 2,700. Oh my goodness. Wow. Master, why gods and goddesses and not angels? Uh, angels are there already, but not enough. Because there are certain things the angels can do 
and certain things they cannot. God and goddesses are more powerful. They have more commanding power. Yes? They can shift, shape things. For the purpose of what you were praying for, only God and goddesses can do it better. Some angel can do some, and some the God and goddesses can do some. We must thank the God and goddesses, but we are also to be grateful to the angels for their extreme protection and help. All the same, eh? Wow, yes, Master. Different jobs they're doing, yes. We know there must have been gods and goddesses and angels present because it was such a huge event for us, yet everything went very smoothly. Thanks, God. <laughs> Thank the gods and goddesses. Thank the angels for their presence and, and their help. Yes. yes, we'll thank them. And um, well, we understand who the angels are, but we'd like to learn more about the gods and goddesses. Um, Master, could you tell us, for example, what level they are? They are individuals. They are from the astral levels, second levels, third level, fourth level, fifth level. They are higher spiritually than the angels. They have more commanding power, okay? They have more protection power, more uh, creative power. I see. Wow. Um, Master, and how many angels came to help us? for the event? Oh, angels are so much. <laughs> Why do you want to know these numbers? Curious, Master. About 3,000. Oh, wow. Thank you, Master. What do you think? You always want to do things and then you don't have <laughs> inner power and you don't have manpower. And you, <laughs> and you always ask to do great things, but it's good. You gotta have a dream, right? The Americans say you gotta have a dream. <laughs> if you don't have a dream, how would you have a dream come true? No? Yes, Master. <laughs> it's good that you am high. Otherwise, I also would not ask you to do anything because I just teach you to meditate and that's what I ask you to do. <laughs> and if, you, if uh, you feel like inspired to do something else, if heaven, okay, I'm okay. <laughs> yes, Master. Thank you so much, Master. No, you're welcome. Yes. Um, and we we're also wondering, um, were the gods and goddesses helping um, invisibly, or did they manifest into physical beings? And both, both. Some invisibly, some manifested in physical form. Wow. But you wouldn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> they do it so well. They're just like you and... Nobody noticed. If maybe some highly advanced psychic spiritual person, maybe they would have noticed. But uh, a lot, most even then, they all focus on the program and <laughs> mesmerized by the performances of the talented artists. They wouldn't have noticed if the angel or the, the manifested gods and goddesses sit next to them. Wow. <laughs> yeah, many times I'm fooled too, you know. Many times I'm fooled too. Uh, if I don't notice, if I, I not pay attention, then sometimes I also don't know. One time I was uh, somewhere in the outside supermarket and tried to get in. I uh, want to get in to buy something for the dogs. And suddenly there was a person, looked like a homeless person, with uh, many tools missing, and the clothing looked like beggars, came next to me and asked me for 50 cents so that he can go and call the phone, on the pay phone. So I gave him 50 cents. And then he was grinning, and then he left, but he didn't go to the phone. And then I looked, I said, ah, <laughs> he just wanted to go near and talk to me. He was a third level god. Oh, wow. He didn't need any phone, nothing. 50 cents, I realized he could not call with the 50 cents. Oh, yes, Master, wow. <laughs> That's a one of the time. There are other times as well, like somehow we couldn't find a park place and then there was a person just keep walking in front of us and then the driver just keep like focusing on him and keep driving with him and then found a park place very near. And then, and then I realized, oh, that's not a normal person. Oh, wow. <laughs> but he already disappeared. And I said to the driver even, I said, oh, you should have thanked that God. He's from the, 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 the third level, came to help us. 
It's one of those things, you know. Sometimes I notice, sometimes I don't. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Now you know. Now you know I'm as ignorant as you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, Master. We love to hear these stories. It's so nice. Ignorant, <laughs> ignorant stories. Yes. <laughs> oh no. So nice to okay. hear. Thank you. Uh, Master, I've. I have two small stories also from Loving the Silent Tears. Um, the first one yeah, yes. has uh, a fellow association member who was on the plane to come see the musical. Uh, she had a vision of the Shrine Auditorium appearing as a castle that was brightly shining with jewels. Wow. Yes. And in addition, before she came um, to the event, she uh, also heard melodies inside. And then later when she heard the songs at the musical, she recognized that they were the same songs that she'd heard inside before. Um, so, yeah. so that's the, that's the first story. Wow. The second one is about uh, one of the Loving the Silent Tears composers. Is uh, is uh, Mr. Don Pippin? Yes. Uh, he told he told us that one of the songs he was composing had been uh, a challenge to compose, um, and then um, later on he he wrote to us, uh, saying, "I think Supreme Master Ching Hai was visiting me in my dreams, for it was there that I decided to completely rewrite the song. I woke up this morning with a wonderful new idea." It has a lot of interesting phrases that uh, keeps it fresh and interesting. Hope I keep dreaming ideas. And he also wrote, I love Supreme Master's poem. And he's referencing your poem, Initiation. She is quite a thinker. As I wrote, I realized more and more that Supreme Master Ching Hai has a great sense of humor regarding the subject of love. So Master, based on those two stories, our question is, um, were the melodies already created beforehand in heaven? and uh, were the composers the, the instruments to bring those melodies into our world? Yeah, somehow, but uh, the melody in heaven would have been more refined, you see. Yes, uh, they must be a very good instruments then. Very good they were, very good they were. Good instruments, yes. But if, if you hear it uh, original in heaven, it would be a little bit more refined. But you see, we don't have the, the instruments in this world is not just depending on the composer and the musician. It depends on the instrument. And we have uh, physical instruments. It could not carry out uh, exactly the tune, the more refined tune that we have in heaven. That's all. Okay? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Thank you very much, Master. You're welcome. Master, I have another Loving the Silent Tears story. Al Kasha, the distinguished composer who had first thought of the idea for the musical, Loving the Silent Tears, yes. wrote a letter to you after the show saying, Thank you so much for your commitment of love, peace, and harmony throughout the world. I have received, because of you, letters from people who have said that the show changed their lives. And Master, a number of the artists like the Persian pop star Siavash Shams and Brazilian singer Fabiana Passoni, as well as the audience said, that the musical was life-changing for them. And for instance, we quote one guest whom we spoke with at the banquet. He said, I think it changed a lot of lives tonight. I think I've just become a vegan. Master, can we know how significant this musical is for our world in terms of world peace, spiritual evolution, etc.? Has it constructively changed just those who've seen the production, heard the songs, or read of it, or does its influence go beyond that? Yeah, of course, it's influence more directly the people who coming in contact with it. But of course the, the influence will go beyond and continue when we spread it more out. Yeah? And even before that, the vibration, the frequencies of these verses and music will carry through the whole world, you know, like, a, like radio wavelengths. <laughs> people's soul will understand it. Even if the mind does not grasp it, people's souls will understand and be uplifted all the same. Thank you, Master. Yes, and this will continue to the next generation. Wow. Yeah? wow Master. Thank you, Master. <laughs> Master, did the musical have a particular effect on the 16 countries that were represented in the show? Yes, of course, they earn more merit, yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, but also thank to you, and thank to Mr. Alcasa, because uh, 
even though it's made in heaven or it's heaven's will, we need an instrument in this world to start it, to initiate it. So Mr. Akasa uh, wanted to make it and you want to do it. So of course, and that's how it become, okay? Yes, Master. Thank you, Master. I myself, I myself would not uh, tell you, okay, go do the music or tell Akasa go write something. <laughs> I'm busy with other things, but uh, if you want to do it, many people okay together, then this uh, is like heaven's will. Hmm? Well, thank you, Master. Okay. Hi, Master. Hi. Master, with the live broadcast of Loving the Silent Tears on Supreme Master Television, so many people from around the world, knowing that it was just one show in Los Angeles, they were so grateful that although they could not attend the musical, they could experience the show live. During and after the event, many of them posted their comments on Twitter and Facebook. So I'd like to read a few of these comments for you, Master, if I may. Okay, sure. Master, on Twitter... Xander Foxpaw said, Good thing that there's live streaming or I won't be able to watch the performance. Thank you from Singapore. And Christina mm. Lee from Malaysia said, I woke up so early just to watch this. No regrets. And Asami said, Please come to Japan. And Irene <laughs> Corneo added in, And in the Philippines too. She added a smiley wow. face. <laughs> and lastly, so cute. Color Wheels posted, Rays of light of hope, peace, and love, loving the silent tears. What a beautiful night at the Shrine Auditorium. Yeah, it's very really nice. Um, and Master, there's some uh, posts on uh, Facebook, the social media site Facebook. Uh, first, Mr. Yeah. Robert Daniels, he writes, This was an amazing musical. I cried, laughed, wanted to sing out. Thank you so much for this. It was beautiful to see so many cultures together as one in peace. Wow. And, and then uh, Lisa from Toronto, Canada, she is the head of the Brian Jew International Fan Club. She wrote, Thanks for making this awesome show available to an international audience through the live webcast. Loved it. Everyone worked hard and did an incredible job. And she put a heart icon. Was it so good that people in every way can watch it? Uh, it was a li live streaming master, so people could come to a Supreme Master TV website and watch it. And so they could wow. also enjoy it just like the audience on, on the day of the event. Wow. That's a good job you guys done. Thank you. <laughs> and, and next is uh, Lori Copeland. Uh, she's from the leading magazine called Hollywood Reporter. And that's a U.S.-based magazine. Mm. And she said, Beautiful show on Saturday. Congrats to everyone who was in the show. Thank you for putting my name on the beginning of the show. That was so exciting for me. The music was inspiring to my soul and I love the pure and soulful music. Uh, and then, all the way from Germany, Marie-Louise Sparang wrote, originally in German, an incredible musical, wonderful voices and actors with a special charisma. Here is a musical that gives pure goosebumps. I hope it comes to Germany and I can watch it again. Greetings from Uder Schlesam, Bavaria. Wow. And Murdad Sarlak, uh, he's a reporter for Andisha TV, uh, an Iranian TV channel based in the United States um, with millions of viewers. He wrote, The night was marvelous, and he wrote that in all capital letters, spiritual and ethereal for me. Thank you for including me in this journey. The red carpet interviews went fantastic, and the show and banquet defied words. Love, love, love to you. We'll be airing the footage on my TV show soon. Wow. Wow. Nice people. Very spiritual people, so they can feel the tune in, you know, spiritual upliftment. Good for them. <laughs> Master, many people in the audience, they shed tears when they heard the song you composed, Talking to a Stone Buddha. Yeah. Um, may we know when you wrote this beautiful song, Master? Some years ago, like, uh, after the international retreat in Taiwan. Oh, that February 2007 retreat in Taiwan? Yes, I think so. I had to leave so quickly and suddenly. But is we okay now? It's just <laughs> that time it was really very difficult. Oh, Master. I was thinking only a stone Buddha. <laughs> we can be able to bear all this and still love the world. 
So the essay came came from the heart. <laughs> I wrote it with the tears, <laughs> tears of of a stone Buddha. <laughs> yes, and the people in the audience and us too. We we feel the lyrics and. I think we can feel Master's tears and loves in it too. It's a beautiful song. Maybe that's why. Yes, I feel the world. Uh, they are just so, so much uh, misguided, so much in darkness. You know, uh, the tears just come out, <laughs> feeling sorry, sorrow for the whole, whole world, and I was feeling so sorrowful, so sorrowful. So sorrowful for them, yes. <laughs> okay, that's how the songs come out. That's why, maybe that's why people shed tears, because it's a, it's a real emotion, real experience, yes, real feeling. Wow, yes, Master. Right. Thank you. Welcome. And um, actually, many members of the media covered the musical event, um, and I'd like to share a couple of the reviews, some excerpts that were written. Okay. Um, so Cal Review LA, which is a Los Angeles-based online newspaper with readers around the world, wrote, directed by the highly acclaimed Vincent Patterson, Tony nominee and director of two world tours of Michael Jackson and Madonna, comes this new musical, Loving the Silent Tears. And its simple and deep message was not overshadowed by its evidently star-studded performers. Kindness, compassion, generosity, love, and spiritual involvement through adversity are the lesson and thread woven through this high energy and wonderful uplifting show. Wow. Um, and another journalist from Canyon News, um, a newspaper in the Beverly Hills area, she also attended the event, and this is what she wrote. The production was dedicated to the belief that kindness is never overrated and should be shown to people of all cultures. By the end of the night, many couldn't help speaking with fellow guests about their favorite scenes or their emotional connection they made with its overall theme. Supreme Master Ching Hai's contributions to society have influenced people to convey her message through art, which then inspired the audience to give back as well. Wow. Her work has caused a never-ending cycle of humanitarianism that will prove beneficial to this world's future. Thank you, Master. Wow. <laughs> They're very kind, very kind media. <laughs> yes, it's about time that people uh, in the media should uh, report truthfully and uh, more caringly and lovingly like that about something that is truly good and beneficial. Yes, Master. Good for them. And Master, there were many more positive media reviews and responses from all around the world, but there's just so many that we can't mention them all. Good for them, yes. Thank you, Master. Oh, and another interesting note is that since the event has been over for two months, the billboard promotions for Loving the Silent Tears have also ended but we recently received a call from a gentleman and we discovered that one of the billboards is still up. He, yes, he was saying that he just saw the billboard and wished to attend the event. So now he's looking forward to the CD and DVD. It's so heartwarming to see Master's Light still shining over the city of Los Angeles. Okay. Yes. Hi, Master. Any more? Yes. Yeah. We just wanted to share... Um, we have started distributing Loving the Silent Tears, the, the CD, mm -hmm. and people as far as Canada and Korea have bought it online. And uh, someone from the public in Texas, in the USA, named Mervyn Malone, he, he bought the CD and he commented on Facebook. He said, I just received mine in the mail today. Beautiful music. Everyone had a superb voice. Master, Mr. Malone also wrote that he had been following everything related to Loving the Silent Tears, and that he's a huge Jody Watley fan and had also heard of Master. He wrote, I really wish Loving the Silent Tears could be aired on PBS or Bravo as well. It has a message of peace that can be experienced by all. I really love how the poetry was disseminated into various cultures for playback to the audience. It's like all of the players' singers either represented God or some creator force, 
or represented some historical spiritual marker relevant to each culture. And a master, a lady from New York named Ita, she's a teacher of Judaism who watched the musical live online. She told us that she cried when she saw the Middle East scene and at the end. And this lady said that it was meant to be that she found out about Master. She told herself that she just had to find out more about this wonderful person. So after downloading some of your lecture, she said about you, Master, this woman is incredible, incredible. She's got the right message to bring the world peace and harmony. And she knows how to convey it. Not many people can do that. It takes me a lot to believe in something. And yes, I believe she's God's direct contact. She's going to do something for this world, trust me. I will definitely promote her message in the world. And she also ordered the musical CD, Master. Wow. Yeah, Master, the choreographer and um, the performers of the show, they said they still carry the tunes from the musical in their heads. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, even just recently, the, the director, Vincent Patterson, he told us that he still has the songs of the musical in his head. Um, <laughs> The more I listen to the songs from the Loving the Silent Tears, the more I feel uplifted, hope-filled, and energized. It's a bit like the feeling when we first started watching Supreme Master TV when it was broadcasting globally. Master, oh. Master why is this so? Are the songs of Loving the Silent Tears charged with the same kind of vibration as Supreme Master TV? More, more. <laughs> wow. It's more direct, more undiluted. Wow. Because in Supreme Master Television, we, we have to broadcast sometimes not very uh, healthy news, not very um, more wanted news, not very positive news. See what I mean? I understand. So it's more diluted. Yeah? Wow, that's amazing. This one, just, just direct, just all about God, just all about longing for God. It's all about peace, love, and kindness. More direct, undiluted, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much, Master. You're welcome. Master, could you tell us about the country's levels? Um, in the beginning, you had mentioned the, uh, the oh. different levels of the countries. Okay. You haven't forgotten, huh? <laughs> 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 okay. Let me check out. Uh, you see, uh, in the beginning they were uplifted and then they come back down again and then they come back up again and they come back down again. <laughs> They're not very stable, aren't they? But uh, later on, human will develop more spiritually and they will be more stable, okay? Yes, Master. Uh, Right now, I can tell you. <sighs> There's so many levels. It is uh, very easy for the master to uplift people, uh, disciple or non disciple, to the higher level. It's just difficult for them to keep it. Understand? Uh, yes, master. Mm. Oh, yes. There are many. Uh, um, See, because some people, they have goodness within them, but uh, far, far from saintly quality. We have the NQ, uh, we have uh, LQ, yeah, remember? Yes, LQ, yes. HQ. Yes. But we must also have GQ and SQ. GQ is the goodness quality inside, not the personality that we show outside. Some people look very... Uh, sweet and humble, but inside they're not, okay? And some people look uh, like a bit rough and not very polite or not very sweet, uh, but they are very good inside. And some people look like a saint, but they're not. Some people don't look like a saint, but they are, okay? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so GQ and SQs are more important than other Q even. Wow. Yes, because it's not shown. It's not shown, mostly inside. Okay? Yes, Master. Mm. And at the moment, I can tell you roughly, you know, like 64% uh, plus percent of people on the planet is above human. And 
64% above astral level, 47% a third level or and or above third level or at the third level border. Okay? Yes. And of course more are from the fourth and the fifth as well. Uh, let me check here. Uh, that was kind of a month ago. Maybe it changed a little bit now. <laughs> as I told you, they come up and down. Yes, they are influenced by the circumstances and the situation around them and the people that they are with. Yeah? Yes, Master. Uh, six. Oh, that's too long ago. Oh, my God. Okay. From the 8th of December, 2012, uh, mm, some uh, disciples in our group have improved. Wow. Uh, more than before, better than before, a little bit. <laughs> like, uh, right now, in our group, we have the human levels, 1%, still at human level. Understand? Yes, Master. Even yes. though they are initiated, but they don't. They were too low, and then in order to get them up, <laughs> it takes a long time. When you are very high already, it's easy to take it up. When you're too low, it uh, takes a longer time because of the mind and the karma. A uh, human level, 1%. One, 1%. Still in hell level, imagine, 1%. Wow. Still in astral level, 7%. Uh, on se but before, it was even worse, ne? They are coming up now. Before, more hell level, more astral level. Now, 7%. Uh, second level, 8%. Third level, 17%. Fourth level, 28%. Wow. Fifth level, 53%. Wow. Above fifth level, 0%. <laughs> the disciples level as of December 8, 2012, there's 15% uh, more because there are some unofficial, so-called unofficial disciples. Not all of them are, are registered disciples. They have not been officially initiated, but they have seen Master and they have believed in her. And there's good opportunity, uh, good affinity, so the Master gave initiation because some people cannot come to see Master for some reason. Yes, you know the world is sometimes difficult. Now, between the disciples, there are chumpy ones, so the percentage of them is like... Between human uh, level and hell level are 2%. Between human and astral, 2%. Between astral and second level, 4%. Between second and third level, 7%. Between third and fourth level, 62%. Between fourth and fifth level, nine percent. Between fifth and above, zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> very stable. That, that, that level is very stable. Right. Always zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you cannot say that my disciples are not stable. <laughs> some, some are very stable. <laughs> that is included in the hundred percent inside. Not extra hundred percent. Not extra another hundred percent. Because sometimes, the human levels, like one percent, but another time, you know, another one keep jumping up and down. These are the jumpy percentage of disciples. Okay, the second list, the so-called jumpy percentage of the initiates in our group, those who are not stable in one level, but uh, you know, jumping from one level to the next and back and forth for a while. But, uh, you know, even though they are not consistent at the moment, but they probably will be stable later on. Or we hope they will be stable as they go higher and more stabilized. But both lists, the stable one and the jumpy one, are just uh, relative, you know, as they could change any moment. It's just uh, for you as a reference, as of the moment that I saw it, at the date that I have seen it, okay? So the separate list is the jumpy one. Between human level and hell level, 2%. Between human and astral, 2%. 
between astral and second level 4%, between second and third level 7%, between third and fourth level 62%, between fourth and fifth level 9%, between fifth and above 0%, and the rest are stable. The rest who are not in this above, they are stable in their whatever level they are at the moment, but they could change still, I told you. The jump elites are for those who jump too often, and the rest of the percentage that I have not mentioned, like 14% left, yeah, are more stable. Yes, Master. Okay, that was, uh, phew, that was the 8th of December, eh? Yes, Master. Mm. Okay, um, concerning the level of the world people, there's something I want to add to it, like, you know, um, overall, uh, general levels as of uh, 8th of December 2012 is like this. Of course it has been worse before and now people has become better, believe it or not, despite everything. After the screening, the rest of people has become better. Now, for example, hell level for the whole world people is only uh, 0,001%. And astral level, zero comma one and a half percent. So the people who remain at human levels, three percent. Coming up to second level, fifteen percent. Uh, third level, thirty-two percent. Fourth level, three percent. Fifth level, four percent. This is for the all human, humankind. And then between second level and third level, two percent. Others are not really worth mentioning. I'm probably tell you later. Between third level and fourth level, three percent. Between fourth level and fifth level, five percent. Wow, that's nice. Between fifth level and higher level, no percent. <laughs> you know, and others in between human and hell, or hell and astro, or astro and second level. You know, other left over. So overall, I have told you that there's uh, at least well, many percentage are above hell. Only 0,001% are still at hell level. So most people, a lot, you know, the majorities, they don't suffer hell anymore. I'm really happy to tell you this. Well, well then you know that above the level, you never have to return to reincarnate or suffer ever again. That's wonderful. But this is not uh, definitely, you know, going to change and people become better and better. And I donate my spiritual merits as I earn it, wherever I'm allowed to give people a lift. So this is wonderful news. That's wow. really nice. Okay. I hope you have it. Master, we would love to know more about prana. Would you be so gracious as to share further information about this with us? Um, you see, human, we normally have high prana, yes. Uh, but uh, we reduce it, the blessing, and reduce the prana by our less holy, less loving lifestyle like eating animals, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, cigarettes, etc. And then the DNA keep transfer from one generation to the next. So the next generation will also have less, have less and less and less prana, yeah? That's why we have to eat a lot. And then we also influenced by the appetite of other people around us. So sometimes you are in a crowd, you eat more. Is that not true? That's very true, Master. <laughs> when you eat alone, you don't feel, you don't eat that much, but when you eat with the crown, oh, it tastes so good, eh? Mm. Yes, Master. And you eat more. That's the, that's the reason. <laughs> DNA influence each other as well. Mm? Wow. So the average humans uh, now need to eat a lot because the little prana left. Uh, the average of humans, prana now only 20%. The highest of them would have like 80 to 135 percent prana. The lowest about 17 percent. Wow. Yes. 
but maybe also because they have the chance to choose more food, as more food items, so they eat more than required. Wow, listen. But higher prana not necessarily mean higher levels literally. If it's a certain level, that doesn't mean uh, higher spiritually, yeah? So let's check out here, like uh, SMCH, 662% prana. Wow! <laughs> and the 10th <ten> of August, <laughs> now she's uh, thousands more above that. Wow! But she's still eating once a day soup or something. <laughs> oh, Don't wow. taste that much anymore. SMCH has 662% but she still eats soup and so. <laughs> but very less, she eats very less now because she has very little uh, choice, even if she wants to. You know, the, remember the love and peace list that I gave you? Yes, Master. She has even less, less than that. Oh. Because uh, the list I gave you still have, some have less, Feeling, but doesn't mean not all of them have no feeling, okay? So she choose only the non-feeling and there's very little. Wow. <laughs> two or three kinds, two or three kinds of vegetable, <laughs> melon, cucumber, <laughs> that's just about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, uh, Teresa Neumann, you remember her? Yes, Master. From Yogananda book. She had at that time 153%. And uh, there is a nun in Taiwan called Fu Hui Ni Shi. She used to live in Mali. She had, when her, she was alive, 143%. Wow. Uh, there was a Russian lady, an old Russian lady on TV, on our Super Master TV. It's 60, over 60 years old, yeah. She sings songs and all that. And she looks so pinky, yes. She has 180% prana. Wow. The Indian holy man, we call him, have 272% prana. Wow. No wonder he don't eat, he don't drink, and she also, no? Yogananda, when he was alive, he has 92% of prana within him. A higher prana not necessarily means higher levels spiritually. Some saints do eat to show affinity with planet beings. She like Yogananda, he has 92%, but he still eats something. Okay, and now... Um, uh, animals, many of them has more prana than human at present. We humans used to have more prana. We didn't used to need anything to eat. We could fly, and now we can't. We're bound on the surface of the planet and we eat a lot of stuff we still feel never satisfied enough. But the animals, they have still preserved more or less their, their natural uh, pranic status. So that's why sometimes they can survive without food for a long time. You see, three months, even the bear, three months uh, hibernating, yes, or the fox or other animals. Oh. Three months, no food, no drink. And uh, the, the penguin is standing there for two months waiting for the wife to return. Oh, yeah. And uh, hatching the eggs for two months in such a condition. You saw it, yeah? Yes, Master. And without eat, without drink, and they okay. But we, we should, we'll die. Huh? Mm. Yes, Master. Most people will die in that situation. Or they, the animals can survive with very little variety of food. Now we know why, huh? Okay. I'm reading you. Some of the uh, of the animals uh, prana status. Uh, elephants, for example, mm. on the scale of 100, the elephant has 132 percent. Wow. Horses, yeah. No wonder they don't. Eat, they just eat <laughs> grass and they grow so big, eh? <laughs> yes, Master. <laughs> we eat so many things and we don't grow uh, half the size of the elephant. Horses, 131%. You see, they survive only on dry hay or grass even, yeah? Cows, 130%. Giraffe, 133%. Donkey, 131%. Goose, 93%. Monkey, 92%. Chicken, 12%. Oh, chicken. 
whale 170%, dolphin 123%, rabbit 64%, seal 63%, polar bear 62%, squirrel 19%, turtle 115%. Wow! This is just uh, coming out at random, okay? <laughs> So you jump from polar bear to squirrel, <laughs> from big one to small one. There's no, no uh, order here. Turtle, 115%. Cockatoo, you know, one of the, the white looking or pink looking mm, parrot called cockatoo. Like my bird, named Mirabo. Yes, Master. Yeah. 63%. Wow. Blue, for example, blue gold, blue and gold macaw. Macaw, 64%. Oh. You know the, the parrot, uh, like uh, Sunny? Yes. yes, yes, Master. Average dogs have 94%. But if they eat meat, their prana are lower, of course. Oh. Like Hamid, my dog, 94%, he has it. Yes, because he didn't lose it, because he'd been very vegan. Yes. Yes, Master. Uh, a Rottweiler, like Goody, normally have 93%. Well, that's why they're more aggressive a little bit. <laughs> Eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but Hamid, he loves food. Eh? Maltese, like Benny, 92%. Average cats have 33%. 33, three, three. yeah, that's why they hunt. Huh? Tiger, 22%. Lion, 21%. Leopard, 18%. Penguin, 62%. Rat, 18%. B, 6%, these four examples. So the average human has even only 20% prana, less than the tiger. Mm. Wow. Uh, yes, okay, all right. <laughs> now you know everything, well, almost. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating, Master. Yeah, so many things I cannot tell you. So much stuff. Okay. <sighs> very, very much stuff that I cannot tell you. Anything else you want to know that uh, on the spot right now that you can think of or before we close? Master, should we eat less to try to gain more prana? Uh, you eat as much as you, your body needs and your mind craves for. Otherwise, you keep thinking of food all the time. You can't even meditate. Yes, Master. And when you meditate, the vision come out in bread and noodles and <laughs> instant food. <laughs> yeah, veg, burger. What do you think? It comes out in the vision sometimes. Uh, if you want to try, you can try a lesson a little bit at a time, okay? If your body can, can bear it, all right? Yes. yes, Master. Listen a little bit at a time, a little bit, a little bit. See how it goes. Hmm? The problem is uh, if you, you, you can, then you do it. If you cannot, then uh, just continue as usual. You know how people go on diet? They only gain double afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Master. <laughs> I'm worried about that. But if you can lessen the food, then it's fine. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you, Master. You're welcome. Master, during one of the retreats, Someone had said uh, there was a prediction on the internet that from the December 21st to the 23rd, the world would have three days of darkness. And at that time, Master had mentioned about uh, angels coming to light up the sky. Uh, so um, we wanted to just ask Master about that. Could you please provide any more insight on that? No, we already have no problem. We will still be here for a while. Okay. <laughs> Nothing drastically will happen, okay? Thank you, Master. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, uh, Master, one clear, uh, another point of clarification. Earlier, Master had talked about the top two qualities, SQ and GQ. So GQ would be goodness quality, and SQ is saintly quality. Is, is that the yeah. SQ? Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? If not, then not. <laughs> Does Master have any message for the world during this holiday season of Christmas and New Year? Ah, okay. It's very simple, no? Mm. Now that uh, we have saved the planet, or the planet is saved for
a long, 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 long time. We all should try to go more inward, focus more on spiritual connection with the divine within. Ask for forgiveness from heaven. Be more compassionate, more humble, more grateful to the mercy of heaven and do more good for the world. The more good you do for the world, the more good you will get. The more happiness you bestow on other people, the more happiness you will gain. It's not like you do good to others, then uh, it's just uh, work for yourself. It's not like that. Little work, little effort that you put out for others will gain you many, many thousand fold in return of good merit for you. Now that we have time, the planet is still there, we have time, we should think more about spiritual side of our nature and get contact with it and uh, not to be too indulgent in material comfort and greed and other things that is transient. We should look more for the long everlasting happiness and true bliss within ourselves. Heaven is always here within us if we go inward and connect with it. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you for you. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Very intelligent question. I'm proud of you. Continue working if you want to stay there and meditate as much as you can. Okay? Yes, Master. Thank you so much for the opportunity to work here. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Of course I won't see you again for so soon, so have, have a very Merry Christmas and lucky, happy New Year. Yeah? Lucky every day. Happy every day. New Year. And Happy New Year to you too, Master. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Living Master? Yes? Uh, in this holy and joyful time of the year, uh, we are grateful for this greatest privilege of sharing this time with you. Uh, this conference is the most treasured present for all of us as well as for our world. And uh, truly, you are the most precious gift to our universe. Um, thank you for your boundless compassion and wisdom, Master. And uh, we pray that you will always be safe and warm and in the very best of health. We love you, Master. Thank you, Max. Thank you, all of you. I love you, too. Oh, I love you too, and it's, uh, I wish I could spend more time with you, but uh, we are all working together in the same goal, so we're looking in the same direction instead of into each other's eyes all the time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. May heaven bless you much more than last year. <laughs> bless you forever. Okay, have a good time this holiday season. Relax a little bit and then continue working. Ciao, ciao. Love you, Master. Love you. Love you. Happy New Year to you. Love, love. Love, love, love.